even as you seek to escape from what you consider to be the matrix, be careful that you're not constructing or unaware of an even deeper matrix, an even more elaborate set of illusions of social institutions, an even more rigid and complex set of organizational structures. Okay? I've been seeing a lot of videos about how oh, life is so pointless. You know, God doesn't exist. If God existed, then blah, blah, blah. Right? Bad conclusions based on um, even worse assumptions. These are matrices. These are structures of your mind. So I've been, I've been seeing a lot of videos recently online about how um, different people giving advice to their younger selves. Right? This idea that if you had the opportunity to go back in time, what would you say to your 20 year old self kind of thing right i've seen i've seen people in their 60s and older people in their 40s 50s um so yeah this is one such video rather than list things right rather than just say okay number one number two number three which is good which is fine um as i started to make notes of all the things that i would go tell my 20 year old self even as i'm in I'm almost 35. Um, in a couple of months, I'm going to be 35. Goodness gracious. Um, even as I started making a list of all the different things I would have loved to know in my 20s, I realized that there was so much going on. So rather than just listing a whole bunch of different points, I decided I was going to... Well, first I started grouping them together. I started grouping them together. And then eventually even the group started becoming very, very dense. And even they started having a lot of you know, information. So I said, right, what if eventually it became, it became a framework? I'm like, what if we create some kind of framework to position everything in such a way that it's, it's easy to remember? Okay, that's the key here. It's one thing to go back in time and give yourself all of this wonderful advice. But if the information is... is is overwhelming it's pointless isn't it so I was like right we've got a framework here right so I made it I made I, first first I created the list then I decided right this is too long it's <laughs> too much going on so let's start grouping everything I grouped everything and then I grouped it even more to make it easier to remember and easier for me to understand it easy for me to sort of disseminate as well easy for me to share so that's what we did and then I was like right It'd be cool if this was visual, wouldn't it? Rather than just giving you this long list, how about we create some kind of visual, some, something to make it visual, right? If it's visual, it's nice to look at, it's easy to remember. So that's exactly what I did. Thankfully, we have all of these wonderful tools. I pulled up one of them, um, and then I, I asked it basically, you know, turn all of this into markdown text, right? Um, and then, Basically, let me show you what it did, first of all. Um, let's see, mark map. So yeah, firstly, this is it. This is everything that I fed into the, into the system. I think it was ChatGPT, basically. And then I said, right, turn all of this into markdown. So which is what it did. It turned it all into mark. Um, it's called a mark map. And then... Um, it gives you an, it gives you a chance to download it as an interactive HTML file, which is exactly what I did. I turned it all into an interactive HTML file, and then you can download the interactive HTML file. So that's what we're going to look at. This there's a lot going on here, as you can see. It's a very very detailed map, right? There's a lot of information here, right? You can kind of look through it all. There's there's a lot of stuff, right? I'm going to compress all of this information. And then we can start the presentation okay so let's do just that download it let's get back into YouTube here um, and then we're going to open up what is called a mark map it's called basically the mind body soul framework right a mind body soul framework is basically a way to share all of this wonderful knowledge that I've accumulated over the last several years, three and a half decades, um, to share it in such a way that it's easy for me to share, first of all, <laughs> and secondly, it's visual, right? 
we all want to look at things that look good um, uh, and also obviously because it makes it easy for you to understand and remember so here we go mind body soul framework as you can tell mind and soul are an acronym whereas body is not an acronym okay so here we go this is the meat of the mind body soul framework what is mind mind is basically these four things money intelligence your name and dreams body is just body right there's no acronym there it's just body <laughs> and then soul is these four things as well spirit orgasm unity and language as you can tell there's a lot of um, planes up in the sky so yeah let's get to it people let's get to it what is the mind body soul framework money is the following <laughs> some of the things I'm gonna be mentioning here will seem very trivial will seem like what you didn't know that in your 20s come on man what are you doing they will seem very trivial but believe me they are not trivial in the slightest okay something that I kind of wish was stressed to me in my 20s right that I've come to know in my own time is the idea that you need to be saving money regularly okay um, I, I, on here I've put a tenth of your income but um, you need to save a good amount of your income every single month and I've also put for at least three years now there's no specified time here the amount of time you need to be doing this for depends on whatever plans you have at whatever point in time that you find yourself in so for instance if you have a plan to say move to a different city or a different town or a village or i don't know a different country you need to save money in such a way that will um, enable you to make that move so if you decide okay by the end of this year let's say it's january by the end of this year i want to have this much money you know how much you need to be putting aside for that amount of time basically right so a tenth of your income for three years you need to um, tailor it to where you find yourself and what aspirations or vision you have for yourself now the next part of this um, money segment is the how bit which is create specific funds call it your vision fund future travel you know traveling to a different city different country create a rainy day fund for emergencies for instance right um, and I'm gonna move through all of these because these are pretty basic points that okay <laughs> that I'm, I might not stress too much but believe me these are things that you need to stress to yourself and and that's what I love about this the visual element of it and the fact that it's been framed in such a way that it's easy to remember easy to understand as well okay at least a tenth of your income 10% of your income but again tailor it to whatever situation you find yourself in if you're making quite a bit of money you know you need to save more um, and if if you have very big goals in terms of oh you want to move to a different city different country etc more money needs to be um, assigned to such a goal now mindset and again we're gonna get into some of these points in detail Right? So some of the things will sort of stand out as not making too much sense, but over the course of, you know, hopefully not too long, <laughs> we'll, we'll um, go into some details here. The type of job doesn't matter as long as it covers your bills and allows you to save according to your vision. Okay? When I, when I finished uni, I remember I did a, did a cleaning job because it was hard to find work. So I'm like, listen, let me do this job, fam. Um, and uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't the best time in life, to be honest with you, because I'm like, man, I got so much potential. I'm over here mopping floors. Come on, man. But frankly, that job enabled me to do what I needed to do in that moment. I had bills to pay. That job enabled me to do that, right? Um, frankly, I couldn't save much at that point in time, right? So I, I wasn't 
thankfully I wasn't I wasn't in that position for too long right I, I figured out a way of taking myself out of that but you know I found that most jobs once you go beyond the title they don't sound as fancy as they as, as they as they look do you know what I mean they're, they're not that fancy the moment you take the title out of it it's like oh okay <laughs> it's not that special right a lot of people try to fool you with titles oh I'm this I'm that okay what do you actually do day to day month to month it's not it's not as special as you know what I mean it's not it's not it's not as amazing as it sounds okay um, yeah now once I open these things up I'm gonna close it again just so it doesn't look like an absolute mess <laughs> right uh, what have we looked at we've looked at mindset as well the job you do doesn't matter frankly let it be have a goal this is what I want to do now I don't know if it's something that you can do in your 20s have a vision for your life I don't know if that's actually possible like is that necessary is that possible is that is that is that something that you should be doing at such a young age I don't I'm not sure but I think because it will probably change as time goes on isn't it it will change as time goes on as you gain more experience so I don't know if it's if it's necessary to have a very strong vision that potentially limits where you go and what you're able to do um, so yeah and again this this is something that I don't know whether or not it's actually possible at such a young age but again you need to be able to plan strategically to avoid situations where a lack of money will trap you if you don't have money you're gonna end up trapped in situations that you don't need to be trapped in okay so be very careful about that above all else you need to have your finances in order in your 20s okay Otherwise, you'll end up in situations that you're like, if I had money, I'd be able to just to just leave the situation. But if you're not if you're not serious about money, you're gonna find yourself trapped. All right. Um, another thing that I think is very important as well, called fog. Let me see. Did I bring it? I'm outside, and I brought a bunch of books that I've been reading over the last several years over the last several months as well that I find very useful. Some of them are in audio format. This one I found in a cassette format. Uh, there we go. It's called Emotional Blackmail. There we go. When the people in your life use fear, obligation, and guilt to manipulate you. Dr. Susan Forward with Donna Fra Frazier. I don't know when it was written, so I'm not sure if <laughs> there have been updates to the thinking around this, but this was a good read, man. It's a good read, nice little read. You know, like I said, it's a cassette. <laughs> Who makes cassettes anymore? Apparently they still exist. For those of us that love audio audiobooks, this is the way to go. Emotional blackmail, man. You got to be aware of how fear, again, fear, obligation and guilt, very very powerful tools that will be used to immobilize you to keep you stuck where you are to keep you afraid of the future as if that's a set place right where is the future it's in the here and the now isn't it <laughs> so yeah you have to be aware of very very powerful manipulation techniques that people use um, so yeah like I said read books you need to be you need to be reading like your life depends on it because it absolutely does I'm gonna get into specifics about how to read how to read uh, oh I didn't bring that that other one did I I didn't bring it okay it's fine I brought I brought a different one but anyway fog and the, 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 the symbol there, the imagery of fog, fear, obligation, and guilt, but it, it can be used to sort of cloud your mind, to cloud how you perceive the world, right? So be aware of that. Excuse me, right. Be cautious. Another form of manipulation that you need to be aware of is algorithmic manipulation, right? I write here, avoid watching anxiety-inducing content like turbulence videos, if you're planning a flight, for instance. 
sometimes I'm watching a video and I see some ridiculous video of, oh, this happened in a plane. I'm like, I don't want to see this. How the hell are you going to show me a video like this? I'm not interested in that. I'm not interested in feeding whatever fears I may have. That's absolutely pathetic, diabolical. Don't show me these videos, YouTube and other such platforms. I'm not interested in seeing them. Algorithmic manipulation is going to be absolutely rampant in the years to come because I'm already seeing it right now. Faceless YouTube videos, faceless channels that show up. I'm like, first of all, who is this person? This is clearly an AI voice. Imagine we get to the point where you can't even tell if it's an AI voice. It's just so perfect. Laughing and all sorts. Right? Faceless channels. I saw one where there was actually a face behind it. And it looked pretty good. I shudder at the thought of where things are going, frankly. But, you know, over here, there's no fear. Um, so, yeah. Algorithmic manipulation is going to be very, very high. So beware, be aware of what you're watching. Um, you know, when I was in my 20s, we had YouTube. <laughs> we had YouTube, I think. I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did I have YouTube? I was watching YouTube. But be careful of what you're watching, who you're watching. I'm going to speak more on this in the, in, in later on in the video, but that's very, very key. Do you know what I mean? That algorithmic manipulation bit, that's something that y'all need to take very, very seriously. Something I'm taking very, very seriously. I'm like, nope. If I can tell that, uh-uh, who is this? What are they saying? Why are they saying this? Got to be careful about that. Right. So that's the money side of things, man. That's the money side of things. You got to be, I've added a few things there, but that may not be directly related to money, but still, um... They're somewhat related, right? Money. The amount of money that has flowed out of my hands is absolutely pathetic. Diabolical. <laughs> it's not it, man. Right. Intelligence. Oh, boy. Let's get to the intelligence bit. What did I even write here? I made this a, a few weeks ago, so I'm kind of jotting my memory as I'm going through it again. Right. Challenges. The intelligence side of things, right? The education system cannot measure, harness, or nurture your intelligence, especially as a black man, as an African man, right? I've said this before in several videos, and I'm going to say it again. Black men, African men, if you're watching this, African man, this 20-year-old version of myself, you possess high levels of intelligence, very, very high levels of latent awareness, okay? And I found that the education system that we currently have, this formal education system, does not have, simply does not have the ability to nurture the intelligence that you have. Okay? It simply does not have the ability to do that. Now you might say, oh well, it wasn't designed to nurture your intelligence. It wasn't designed to... Okay, fair enough. But you need to know this. And I think most of us know, most of us already know, most of us already feel trapped, like sitting in these stupid desks. You know what I mean? We already know. So then the challenge is, the question is, what do we do? Uh-oh. You need to seek out avenues to cultivate your intelligence. And I've made a note of a few things here that may seem somewhat silly. Dancing? Dancing? <laughs> Oh, I should start dancing to nurture my intelligence, really. Yeah. Absolutely. Irrevocably. One of the things that I absolutely love doing is walking and listening to audiobooks. I got so many audiobooks now, man. It's not even funny. I got bare books in audio format. Okay. Um, I also have a lot of books physically that, I don't know, should I show them now or I'll show them later on. Um, dancing, walking and listening to audio. Love that. Got me some bowls right here. Oh, shoot. I find me a nice little path and I got my bowls. I just got these, so I haven't had them in a while. Um, but before that, cheap, you know I mean, noise cancelling headphones, get you a nice book. And we, and we absorbing all kinds of material. 
we're absorbing deep material deep knowledge okay um, yeah if you find if you find yourself a bit sort of you know you don't really you find it a bit hard to read physical books get you audio books I'm telling you every book by the way needs to have an audio book accompaniment I'm telling you like whenever I want to read something and it's not available in audio format I'm like you pricks it's easy to do this surely just record it somehow it should be possible every single book out there needs to have an audio accompaniment I'm speaking it out there anyway um, focus on purposeful and focused <laughs> focus on purposeful and focused reading purposeful and focused reading rather than random selections like oh the top 25 books for this or the top 300 books for that do you know what I mean what I find is how you read is more important than what you read okay over the last several years I've been reading quite extensively there's a book here called flow by Mihai Chiksen Mihai very very good book as a man thinketh nice little read cute little read right Merleau Ponty the world of perception the law and the promise by Neville Goddard these are cool books right what's his name Andreas Antonopoulos the the internet of money cool books the way of the superior man by David Dider, a spiritual guide to mastering the challenges of women work and sexual desire really really cool book I like this one outwitting the devil nice read very very nice read uh, black Genesis goodness gracious that's one heavy book right there I've been reading okay and my reading has been very guided it's been very sort of you know focused but nowadays it's even more focused because there's so many books out there do you know what I mean so many books out there actually I'll show these ones in the next segment when we start talking about dreams so I'm gonna leave these for now uh, what else are we about to show yeah these three I'll show in the next segment some of the books we're reading we ain't about to show them <laughs> hell no <nah. laughs> jeez um, purposeful reading man how you read is more important than what you read okay so you need to be reading books don't just be reading the Bible you need to be reading other books other than that it's cool but you need to be reading far more widely than that alone okay um, if the books you're reading are either cheap or free you need to find better better books <laughs> I wrote this a while ago so it's funny reading it again now listen the books I'm reading now I have a book at home I didn't even dare bring it out because it's a big book it's like it's thick man I'm like oh for goodness sake after I make this video I'm gonna disappear because that's the next book that I'm gonna read okay after I make this vi make this video and it's looking like it's about to be a long video which is cool um, there's three other books that I need to read there's one that I'm reading now which I'm gonna talk about later on I'm not gonna say the title of the book yet but there's that one I'm gonna read I've actually started reading it I'm on the second chapter and then there's another book I'm reading like an ethnography book about about um yeah an ethnography not too big decent decent size I don't know a couple hundred pages not too bad of a book um, in terms of the size of it and then there's a third book I need to read that's the that's the that's the heavy heavy book so yeah that book is cheese that book is gonna have me deep in oh man I'm about to tap into the ancestral plane with that one we've already tapped in but yeah that book is heavy 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 physically and metaphorically as well so, and it was very very expensive as well I'm like oh my god this book right here uh -uh. serious but yes why Ooh, okay why that's a very good point as well why do you need to be reading books why do you need to be reading purposefully okay as opposed to just reading a bunch of random books because there's a lot of videos online about read this read that and I've shown you all these books to somewhat illustrate the point <laughs> and somewhat it takes away from the point as well um, but why is a very important question before you find yourself reading anything or doing anything you need to ask yourself why you're doing it okay if somebody tells you to do or not to do something you need to ask them why the Merovingian and the matrix um, ask this question as well 
to to Neo. I don't know if it was the first or the second or which which one of the Matrixes it was, but the Merovingian was like, "Yo, why? Why are you here?" or something to that effect. Um, he he's looking at Neo. You know, Morpheus on the side, Trinity on the side, and he's like, "Neo, why are you here?" <laughs> And Neo was standing there like, she, nigga, Morpheus told me to come, son. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Why are you here? Don't just, don't think, oh, you've escaped the Matrix only to find yourself in another Matrix. Do you know what I mean? You're just doing what you're doing because somebody else told you to do it. Somebody else told you how to think. Somebody, Do you understand? And we're going to get into this idea of the Matrix later on. Um, I don't know if it's the next point or it's somewhere else, but it's somewhere, somewhere in the in the in the coming points. We're gonna talk about the Matrix, fam. Right. So why should you be reading widely? Because knowledge takes time to accumulate, and true learning requires a financial commitment for for, the, for quality resources. The books you should be reading, they can't be like a pound or a dollar or whatever it is. They need to be. You need to put big money into some of these books, bro. If the books you're reading are cheap or free, I'm sorry. Nobody is going to accumulate a lot of knowledge, heavy, heavy knowledge, and just give it to you for free. There needs to be some kind of exchange in place. Okay? So, knowledge takes time to accumulate, man. You need to be reading widely. That's one thing that I would really emphasize to myself in my 20s. Read widely. Okay, a lot of us, those of us that grew up in African cultures, African traditions, do you know what I mean? The only thing that was really instilled to us to read was the Bible, which is cool. But I would argue that we need to read far more widely than that. Do you know what I mean? We need to be reading widely. I would say that's one of the things that has held the African continent back. The fact that a lot of us are drenched in religious thinking, religious dogma. Do you understand? We need to be reading widely, far more widely than we currently do, okay? And I'm going to emphasize this point later on. Ooh, actually now. Oh, boy. So, there is something that I... Basically, the Matrix. I've been thinking about this idea of the Matrix. You know, it's something that obviously, you know, the films have inspired us to really talk about this with the pills and all sorts. So I said, right, that was quite an expansion. <laughs> I should have simplified this so it wasn't too big. But anyway, um, what is the matrix? I've been trying to come up with my definition. Just bit my tongue. I've been trying to come up with, um, let's make sure we ain't got none of that white stuff looking crass over here. <laughs> um, with a definition of the matrix. What is the matrix? A lot of us especially those online have been talking about the matrix what is it and I come up with my well I'm working on my own definition um, a few weeks ago when I was really finalizing the video I um, I came up with the definition but I don't know if I can remember it now but I have the components of it right here the matrix in my view is a set of elaborate illusions and social institutions, okay? Additionally, it is a complex, interlocking, and overlapping set of organizational structures, right? So, in a sense, what one organization fails to do, another organization or set of structures, social structures, will take over and amplify right so let's say what 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 the what the educational system fails to do in one regard um, the church or religious organizations might say okay we'll take on from here we'll take it over from here and and sort of fix that um, uh, that failure point do you know what I mean so those two things I would say make up what um, what I see is the matrix. Elaborate delusions and social institutions, complex interlocking, overlapping organizational structures. Okay? Um, a matrix can limit the intellectual growth 
of one group um, and perhaps amplify those of others, right? Intentionally or otherwise, okay? Now, for me, a very interesting question is, are you constructing... No, the question is, where is the matrix? Is the matrix out there? Now, surely, I think, I think a lot of us would argue that the matrix is out there. There are external elements, the school system, religious systems, that um, shape our lives in very, very key ways. Okay? Now, you see a lot of people online that discuss how they seek to escape the matrix. Okay? And I don't know if that's entirely possible. Or possible in the way that we would like it to be. Where you're completely... Yeah, I don't know about that. Um, so for me, the question then becomes, in your very justifiable attempts to escape from what you consider to be the matrix, right? perceived or otherwise, or constructed, are you immersing yourself into an even more dangerous matrix that you're unaware of? Right? Even as you seek to escape from what you consider to be the matrix, be careful that you're not constructing or unaware of an even deeper matrix, an even more elaborate set of illusions and social institutions, an even more rigid and complex set of organizational structures, okay? That is very important. And that's something that even I'm thinking of myself, right? As much as this video is framed in a sort of, in, in, in this monologue format, me and my own 35-year-old self, you know, <laughs> um, passing on the knowledge to my uninformed 20-year-old younger self, um, I can see, with certain things that I say, I can see my 20-year-old self sort of talking back and, you know, <laughs> giving me their view of things. And, you know, in, in, in another sense, I can also see my 15, myself 15 years from now, with nice little grey hairs looking, looking beautiful. Do you know what I mean? Passing their knowledge on to me with some of the things that I say, Right? So I think, to me, that's a very important um, idea. As much as this is framed as a monologue, I wonder what my younger self would say, what my older self is saying now, right? Right, so with this idea, are you constructing an even more dangerous matrix for yourself in your attempts to perhaps justifiably escape from whatever you consider to be the matrix now? Are you constructing dangerous, even more dangerous structures around yourself? I've been seeing a lot of videos about how oh, life is so pointless, you know, God doesn't exist. If God existed, then blah, 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 right? Bad conclusions based on um, even worse assumptions, right? Videos about how marriage is unnecessary, completely unnecessary, right? Children, oh, come on, completely unnecessary, don't get married, don't have kids. I'm like, right, uh, okay, interesting. These are matrices. These are structures of your mind that you're constructing. So, as much as, again, you have, you know, as much as you're attempting to escape from the matrix, perhaps consider the possibility that there may not be an escape, or one that is obvious. <laughs> There may not be any escape. Um, in the sense that perhaps it's all a matrix. Or it all has the capacity to be a matrix. Okay? It all has the capacity to be a matrix. So, what you see as an escape is simply a doorway to another matrix. We'll leave it at that. Um, so why is this important? Why is it important to define the matrix? Because definitions matter. Like I said, that why is a very important thing. But beyond that, definitions matter. If you define the matrix as an external, imposing world, 
and fail to see the role that you may be playing, then you may end up in a worse position that you anticipated. Okay? That's key. That's important. Um, don't just view it as this thing that's out there. But try to see the role that you play in that system. You are part of the matrix. Don't be like Neo showing up to the Merovingian. And the Merovingian is like, oh, so you want the key, yeah? <laughs> or you want to find the key maker or whatever he said. Why? And Neo is like standing there suited up with the shades. I don't know if Neo answered the question. Or if he did, I don't know if it was a good answer. Why are you looking for the key maker? Are you doing it because Morpheus told you to? <laughs> you found another leader that's telling you to do something when you haven't thought about it on your own? Be careful out there, people. Imposed order or perception. Consider the role you're playing in whatever situation that you find yourself in. Extremely important. I'll elaborate on this later on. Um, in, that, in like manner, in, in, in that line of reasoning, Ideas are like dominoes. Once you consider one, others will follow in like manner. Okay? Don't be out there watching all these videos about how pointless life is, about how God doesn't exist. If God existed, then this wouldn't happen or that wouldn't happen. Da 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 da. It's cold out here, man. It's a little cold, but I'm like, I gotta be outside. I gotta be outside. Yay! How's everybody doing so far? <laughs> We clocked out yet? Oh, shit. We still got a ways to go. But anyway. Be careful what ideas you're taking on because it'll be incredibly hard to rid yourself of them. Do you know what I mean? It's easy to take on an idea. But once you take that idea on, oh, man. You're going to find yourself unable to rid yourself of that idea. So keep that in mind. Yeah, so that's my matrix. That's my definition of the matrix, right? Elaborate illusions and in social institutions. Um, and at some point, I'm going to try and put those two definitions together. Those two parts of the, def of the definition together. Elaborate illusions, a set of very elaborate illusions and in social institutions. Coupled with this idea of complex interlocking and overlapping set of organizational structures, right? So that's it. Um... Yeah, nurture your soul more than your mind. Um, otherwise, you'll end up with no soul, <laughs> with no... Let me see, I wrote this a while ago. What am I trying to say here? Nurture your soul more than your mind. Otherwise, you'll end up with no soul and barely a soul. What the hell? I'm probably trying to say you'll end up with... Nurture your soul... This is a sticky one still. <laughs> this is a sticky one. Might need to edit this bit out of the video, but anyway, <laughs> nurture your soul more than your mind. And otherwise, you'll end up with no, no mind and barely a soul, or no soul and barely a mind. One of those two it was supposed to be. I fucked that quote up. Oh shit. <laughs> Yikes. But anyway, man, we're moving on. We ain't going to get stuck over here. Forget that. We got money. We got intelligence. Don't worry. The body bit, we're going to breeze through that one. So we're going to be at soul in no time. In no time. But in the meantime, hey, let's talk about your name. The importance of a name. Your name is significant, folks. Goodness gracious. Your name is significant. Your first name, middle name, last name. Very, very significant. Um, why is it significant? I would argue, especially for those of us that come from cultures with a strong naming convention, your name is a guide. I know, I know. I can hear the Christians already. I can hear the religious folks going to be like, what? Your name is a guide. The only guide is God. Um, your name is very important. If you come from a culture especially African cultures um, where your parents have followed the naming convention of your region, of your culture, your name is extremely important. 
as I've come to find in, in the last few years. I didn't always know this, but now I'm like, oh, okay. Very, very important. Hey, what are you? you get out of here. Yeah. Get out the way. You need to study each part of your name to understand its meaning and significance. All right? Absolutely need to. I would argue there's a lot of depth and meaning embedded in your name. You need to explore it to gain insight. I'll leave it at that. If you're more interested in that, you can reach out, but we'll leave it at that for now. One of the ideas that I've... I've um, <laughs> one of the reasons why we, we, we may not have the tools to go back in time in the way that we probably would like to is because it would be a very disorienting experience, wouldn't it? Imagine someone showing up and then, first of all, they have to prove that they're actually you from the future, okay? Um, but if, let's say, they manage to overcome that, you know, it would be very, very disorienting because there's a lot of information that presumably the future would hold. There's a lot of information that you would have acquired from that future point. So being able to bring that knowledge down to back to your past self, <laughs> you risk sort of overwhelming yourself in the past. If I had a, yeah, if I have the opportunity right now to go back to myself in my 20s, I'd probably be like, yo, 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 you need to know all of this, fam. And it'd be very overwhelming. Disorienting would probably put it lightly, which is why I think we don't have those tools because we haven't figured out how to, you know, create the right framework so that we don't overwhelm ourselves um, when we do take that knowledge back. But anyway, why did I say that? Uh, there's a reason I said that. Oh, yeah, about the names bit. I'm like, there's more I could say on that, but nah, let's leave it here for now. Let's not overwhelm my 20 year old self with information. In the conclusions bit, I'll highlight what I think is really important. Too long, didn't watch. This is what you need, right? I can't watch this hour long plus video. Come on, man. I want to go back to scrolling on, on whatever. Good grief. Now, where we at? We are at the point where we're going to talk about dreams. Oh my goodness. Dreams are very important, people. Dreams are powerful. Dreams are very powerful, people. Um, I found dreams to be very, very important in my own understanding of what's going on in the world. Okay? All of these notes here, I'm not even going to bother reading them about the dreams, the importance of dreams. I think it's more of a personal thing. Um, but in my own, in my own um, journey, I found dreams to be extremely important in terms of highlighting... Um, I think dreams are kind of like the edge of experience, the edge of consciousness. Do you know what I mean? They're about precision. <laughs> I didn't write this down in my notes. I should have probably thought about it before I decided to, to, to discuss it now. But I think dreams are almost like the edge of experience. Like, if you really want to fine-tune your experience in your waking state, you need to pay attention to the kinds of dreams that you have. You need to be taking notes of your dreams, right? I recently started doing um, a, a dream journal, um, writing down dreams. Um, the moment I wake up, you know document them systematically do you know what I mean and you know what I found is a dream journal will help you notice recurring themes symbols messages that may be significant to your life nobody is saying go and take your dreams and now start making major decisions based on them no but like I said I think they're the edge of experience they 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 help you refine what whatever decisions you may be taking and by the way, none of what I'm saying here should be replacement for, I don't know, professional medical advice, financial advice, etc. You need to seek out those professionals, okay? Um, legal, advice, legal advice, all of that good stuff. 
this video should not be a replacement for that. Now, once in a while I go and I review review them to, to kind of see what's happening to see if um, they may they may be useful for me in 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 my waking state okay so yeah dreams are important number one number two keep a dream journal maybe like well I don't remember my dreams listen Somebody out there must be talking about how to remember your dreams. So go find that person, read about it, watch a video. I don't know. You need to be taking notes of your dreams, baby. Um, keep a dream journal. And we're about to go into details as to why, right? Um, reflect on messages. Let's see what I wrote here. Reflect, reflect on messages and symbols in your dreams and consider how they relate to your waking life. Are you seeing specific objects, animals, birds, cars? Now, let me give an example here. Over the last several years, I've been seeing, I'll give an example of one of my dreams. I'm obviously not going to tell you what the dream is, right? Because uh, I think it's very significant for me. But I've been, I've been, I've been seeing cars a lot, okay? Like me looking at a car, me being inside a car. Um, and I've noticed that there's a lot of detail with that dream. Okay, it's not just a car. Oh, it's just a car. And, and there's nothing more to it than that. I've noticed that there is a lot of detail in the dream. For example, sometimes I'm the driver. Other times I'm a passenger. Sometimes I'm the, I'm the passenger or I'm a passenger and there's just other people in the back. Right? There's people in the front as well. Do you know what I mean? The placement, where I'm seated in the car, I've noticed kind of changes depending on the dreams. In, in different dreams, I'm in different positions, basically. Um, and... At some point, I noticed that, whoa, okay. Not only am I the passenger, or the driver in some in one of the dreams that I had the the steering wheel was on a different side I'm like oh shoot damn that's interesting because <laughs> I'm used to the steering wheel being on one side but at some point I'm like whoa the steering wheel is has changed now very very interesting that's very cool I wonder what this signifies <laughs> So the steering wheel is on a different side and there was someone that I hadn't seen in a while that was in that position, driving. I'm like, oh, okay, I know what this is. I know what this is. I know what's going on here. So you need to take note of those details as well. If you find yourself in a car, and for me, I know whenever I see a car, I don't just think it's not a car. Based on very extensive analysis, note-taking and all sorts, I'm like, oh, a car is not just a car. A car represents something else. It's taking me a while to come to that understanding, but, um, and what it represents for me, which is why I'm not going to go into details about what it represents for me, it might be different from what it represents for you, if even that is how you should be thinking about it, right? I remember after I saw cars for a long time with different people, different placements, steering wheel here, all sorts, different people that I hadn't seen in a while, driving, me driving, different things happening with the car as well how fast the car is going a lot of stuff and then at some point i saw a bus i'm like okay i woke up that day and i'm like a oh, bus i've never seen a bus in a dream before or not to my recollection so i thought about it for a while i'm like i wonder what's going on here do you know what i mean um but yeah it was all very very significant for me all right so I've written here that don't assume that the dream is about a car. Use your dream as a tool for self-reflection, personal development, guiding your decisions and actions. Don't use them to make major decisions. I would actually argue against that. Um, if anything, don't make major decisions based on dreams. But, do you know what I mean? Still pay attention to them, though. Like I said, it's the edge of experience. Um... Share your dreams with trusted friends and mentors to gain different perspectives and insights. 
um, be careful who you share them with, though. Do you know what I mean? But, you know, people that you can trust, people that you know. Okay. This person has my best interests at heart. Don't accept basic, basic interpretations of your dream, right? If you see a crow, for instance, don't be like, oh my God, it's demonic. You know what I mean? Crows are very intelligent animals. Um, you know, there's a book that I, what was that? A couple of books that I've been looking at that are very interesting, offer different perspectives on different elements within a dream. Animal Dreaming, Scott Alexander King. Pretty cool, cool book. I think it focuses mostly on Australian animals, right? Animal Spirit Guides, also another really cool book. Whenever I dream and I see different creatures, I'm like, oh, okay. I need to cross-reference different sources to see what what I could what I can um, get from from seeing a specific animal. Do you know what I mean? A specific bird or a dog or a lion. I don't know. Do you know what I mean? Don't accept basic interpretations like, oh, if you see a black bird, it means this. Sorry, it doesn't. You need to look at very reputable sources. Not to say those are reputable sources, but you need to look at enough of different sources to say that, oh, okay, this is what I think is relevant for me. Right? You need to be critical in your journey. Uh, make recording your dreams a daily habit, whether in the morning, um, keep a notebook, digital app, whoever it is, to ensure consistency, reflect on your dreams regularly, to integrate the lessons and insights they offer into your daily life, okay? So yeah, dreams are important, people. They are important. Where we at? Body. Like I said, body, body is just about the body, man. Do's. Focus on your physical and mental health. Alright? Physical health, mental health. Mental health is the game, people. That's the game. Simple and straightforward. Aim to look and feel like a spirit. My goal is to look like the embodiment of very, very powerful people. Very, very powerful. Like, like if all my ancestors came back in the best possible form, what would they look like? If they came back with knowledge, power, strength, what would they look like? They would look confident, healthy, centered. Do you know what I mean? I want my body to reflect strength. I want people to look at me and be like, oh wow, yeah, that dude is serious over there. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Um, in the gym, I like to keep my workout simple, man. Do you know what I mean? Focus on, do you know what I mean? The kinds of movements that enable me to capture as much of my muscles as possible um so yeah fundamental movements man squats pulls dips all of that good stuff keep that shit simple there's a video i saw recently about how listen you only need this many workouts to pretty much target everything um and that's what i've been focusing on right simple movements um not too many things paying attention to my body if i i was doing a squat the other day and i felt a little something in my back i'm like uh oh not like the spine but on the side i'm like uh oh if i push any further <laughs> this seems like something that's not gonna go the way i would like so let me leave that one so i i, I kind of i had a couple of sets left i think it was like two plates or something a little over two plates i'm like nah let me leave it here bring this shit down finish this workout fasting very very powerful i found fasting to be very 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 powerful for me um 24 hour fast 48 hour fast 72 hour fast very very good um there's a lot of stuff about fasting online you can find do you know what i mean um <laughs> back when i was in a actually i think i'll leave that yeah i'll leave that 72 hour fasts no food just water cheese your water has to be, it can be just just water, just plain water. It can be just that. It needs to be water infused with electrolytes, all right? Get some electrolytes up in there. Pure electrolytes, no sweeteners in it. You know what I mean? Right. So, yeah, fasting, simple workouts that target every muscle, every part of your body. Um, 
physical and mental health. Mental health is the game. I'm telling you right now. That's the game. Um, I was watching a video the other day and then some guy said, Oh, if your nose is too big, you need to get a nose job. I'm like, what? For some reason, I kept watching that guy and he kept talking rubbish. So I dipped on him. But yeah. Um, dear black man, dear African man, you're more beautiful than you realize. Don't be getting no nose jobs. Your nose is a reflection of your ancestral heritage, your ancestral lineage. Um, put some respect on that nose. Do you understand? Don't let anybody tell you just because it's big, it needs to be trimmed down. Nonsense. Absolute rubbish. Um, embrace that nose. Um... Another bit here, I put it as part of body, although I don't know if it's really should be there, but we'll leave you there. Don't rush into any major decisions. You're in a more powerful place in life than you realize. Don't rush into any major decisions. You're in a more powerful place in life than you realize. Um, I was going to skip that, but there's more here. What is it? Single, no kids. Oh, if you're single, you have no kids, you have a healthy body. You're in a very powerful position. You need to look at ways to cement that power, amplify that power. The day black men, African men realize how beautiful we truly are, that day the world will shake. <laughs> the world will tremble. And I mean that literally. You don't need a rotation. Keep your life simple. Keep it pure. Keep it righteous. Um... Don't read all these nonsense books about how to get a woman's attention, how to flirt, how to hold frame, how to do this, how to do that. Like I said previously, time is of the essence. You need to read in a very focused manner. You need to be very focused as a man to um, build a life that is where you have knowledge. Knowledge is power. So whenever I say power, right? attain power what I mean is knowledge you need to attain knowledge very very high levels of knowledge all right that's it I just came out of a major war major 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 setback spiritual war not a physical one thankfully yikes um, and um, the financial and mental health toll was absolutely diabolical on that front I would like to tell the younger self you know what I mean you need to think before making major decisions any decision that requires significant time commitments, significant financial commitments, you need to be very careful about that decision. Okay? Right. Where are we? Spirit. The S in soul is for spirit. Before, you need to ask yourself a question. Before you were African, who were you? Before you were Christian, who were you? Before you were black, or whatever term is being used to identify your whatever. You need to understand the essence of who you are beyond these labels and identities. Okay? Um, what did I say here? Christians and those who follow any one religious book try to extract the essence of what is being said. Try to extract the essence of what I'm saying. Oh, right. <laughs> I'm speaking to Christians at this part of the video. <laughs> Anything that I say that you don't agree with, try to extract the essence of what I'm saying or consider stepping back from it. Right? Every belief system has its place, but recognize the diversity of spiritual paths. Realize that there are many truths and spiritual systems beyond what you may currently hold. There are beliefs outside of Christianity that can offer profound insights one of which we're going to discuss shortly. Um, or should we discuss it now? Should we discuss it now? Let's do it now so we don't forget. Where is it? Hope I brought the book. I just finished reading a very powerful book. <sighs> there are two books. No, actually, we're going to talk about... Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to talk about this in the conclusion. So forget that. Forget that. Um, all right. We've got this part out of the way. We're going to expand on this view about new perspectives later on, okay? Actually, in the conclusion, we're going to discuss it. Right now, I'm very interested in exploring 
non-apocalyptic visions of the world, right? Spiritual systems that don't focus on how everything is going to end and how somehow this person is magically going to come down and save you. Um, I'm interested in viewing systems on um, cycles of renewal. Systems that focus on how things don't just, oh my god, we're all going to... Okay, so non-apocalyptic non views of the world are very much welcomed here. Um, <laughs> religious manipulation. While the elites exploit the earth, they distract you with arguments and debates about pre, mid, post, trip, all of this stuff. Meanwhile, deep stuff is happening behind the scenes. Okay, and if you're out there on a spiritual journey, you need to focus on finding deep, foundational principles instead of getting caught in endless religious or spiritual arguments deep foundational principles time is not linear in the way we consider consider it to be i view it at this point in time i might wake up tomorrow and see it differently but at this point in time i see it as sort of like a spring that expands or has the capacity to expand and con contract or compress itself right um, I could say more on that, but I think I'll leave it there at that time, at this time. Um, yeah. Time is like a spring. I like that analogy. I like that imagery. You know what I mean? This idea of like a coil that goes back and forth, goes, goes, goes. Parts of it are compressed. Parts of it expand. Cute low, vis uh, cute low visual. Orgasm. Oh boy. We about to go in on this one. If you're a man out there in the world today, your mind is being bombarded by explicit content on all fronts. You need to remove pornography out of your life, okay? I think we need to be very worried about its proliferation. <laughs> um, oh boy, I wrote here that it's far more dangerous than AI. Um, yikes. It will either destroy us all in any, th or if it, if it doesn't, whatever is left in its wake will likely not be worth saving. Very interesting. Um, I don't know if I would say that now, but that's a very strong sentiment that I think has... Um, I'm sore, man. I did dips the other day. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Way to dips, too, man. My arms are sore. Um... But yeah, I think it's a very serious thing that you need to take very seriously. If you find yourself in a very serious spiritual battle, you need to steer clear of it um, completely. 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 Yikes. Um, but yeah, you need to completely remove every form of explicit visual content from your life. Um, I would argue you even need to remove masturbation. As well from your life especially if you find yourself in a serious spiritual battle spiritual war completely take it out man I'm telling you right now take it out think of you would go to great lengths to ensure that your nuclear weapons facilities as are, are safe right you would go to great lengths to ensure the safety of these facilities so I would say that watching porn and masturbating all the time it's kind of like having nuclear weapons, but your your facilities are not secure or your oil refinement or other fuel refinement facilities are not very secure. That's what it's like. You need to make sure that these or the software that manages the nuclear weapons are not secure. That's not it. You need to make sure that these facilities are secure. Um, yeah, I wrote here that it has great capacity to destroy the relationships between men and women. Um... <laughs> if you're watching porn regularly now, I wrote here again that it's you're probably not where you want to be financially. You're single and don't want to be single. There's two types of single people. There's people that are single and they're like, you know what, I need to be here right now. I got work to do. And then there's people that are single and for the life of them, they simply cannot rid themselves of that state of being. Um, there's something here that I linked to. Do you know what I mean? explicit material something that I found on reddit that I'm like you know yeah 
I'll link it in the video description for those that are interested in, in reading it. But basically just emphasizes the points that I was making already. Um, yeah. For those seeking to be married, and I know there's a lot of talk about don't get married, don't have kids, don't do this, don't do that. Life is pointless if you're a man. You know what I mean? There's a lot of talk about that these days that I'm seeing online. I don't, I don't quite subscribe to any of them. Um, yeah. Uh, mm -mm. I'm not with that I'm not with that movement I'm not with that way of thinking um, Yeah, so We talked about spirit Spirit is about, what is it about again? Spirit is about seeking Deep foundational principles <clears throat> Deep spiritual principles of those that came before you your ancestral lineage your ancestral heritage you need to not you need to know what your deep ancestry practiced how they thought about the world right how they viewed themselves in the world what kind of challenges they had how they managed those challenges what mistakes did they have how did they come back from those mistakes what kind of mistakes did they have that they probably didn't come back from, couldn't come back from, whatever the case may be, you need to know about these things, all right? This book I'm going to talk about, we'll go into detail about that a little bit. Orgasm, get rid of porn. Um, to become what I call a holy triune, okay? You need to become a holy triunity. Son, husband, father. Again, there's a lot of talk that I see happening. Don't get married. Married is this, marriage is that. You need to become a holy triune, folks. In that order, son, husband, father. I don't think any black man, African man should say that you're going to be single forever. I don't think that's it. That is not it. That is not it, fam. Um, your ancestors didn't go through everything that they went through for you to throw a fit because someone ghosted you. Now you're like, oh, I'm going to be single forever. That is not it. I don't buy that. I'm not with that. Now, <laughs> anyway, let me leave that one. Unity. So unity, you need to be a holy triune. Righteousness above all else. Sexual health above all else. Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah. If you're someone that's been sexually active... You know what I mean? I, I would I would advise you to limit that. Um, and take your sexual health very seriously. Go out there, find a clinic, sexual health clinic, get some tests done, everything's clear, and just leave it as it is. Don't 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 have any kind of um, interactions until you find yourself in a very long term relationship or a marriage. Of, of yeah or a marriage long-term relationship of some sort or a marriage no more sexual encounters that's what I would give myself that's the kind of advice I would give myself okay um, yeah that's key very very important sexual health is very very important something that a lot of us we're not really educated much about we're not really given much advice on you know what I mean but yeah, um, yeah, language, spirituality needs to be practical, not removed from the day-to-day -day life of your experience, do you know what I mean? You need to be learning languages, and I, the reason why I said spirituality should be practical is that you need to be speaking in tongues, what does it mean to speak in tongues? The practical side of that is you need to be learning languages. You need to be learning how to communicate with different kinds of people from different cultures. That is what it means to me to be speaking in tongues. Okay? Speaking in tongues, you need to be speaking different, learning different languages. Mandarin, Wolof, Spanish, Fula, Jola, I don't know. Learn different languages. Okay? Um... Go explore different cultures around the world, right? Stop listening to sad and angry music all the time. 
Okay. Let me see if I can. Ugh. Should I pause this? Nah, I'm gonna just let it run. I'm gonna just let it run. I ain't pausing nothing. Let's get rid of this. One, two. You need to stop listening to sad music all the time, man. When I'm on the gym and stuff, <laughs> I'm like, it's just sad music all the time. This is the music is just. I'm like, I don't. I'm not trying to listen to this. Why is the music so sad? Why is the music so sad all the time? Ain't nobody trying to listen to all this. I want to be able to listen. No, nothing. I don't have anything wrong against anything against sad music, but the music needs to be the kind of music that I want to be able to choose when I want to listen to something that's like has kind of sad emotions and stuff, right? Especially in the locker rooms and stuff. I'm like, why, why, why is this music playing right now? Why is this music playing right now? Nobody wants to hear this. You know what I mean? Let me try and put my video back on. Ooh, yeah. But yeah, this is the music that can elevate you, elevate your emotions, elevate your mind. Do you know what I mean? Music is very powerful, so be careful about what kind of music you're listening to. Now, finally, what are we talking about? You need to get yourself raptured, folks. What does it mean to be raptured? First, we've talked about, we've spoken about what it means to be speaking tongues. You need to speak different languages. You need to be learning different languages. Raptured, it means you need to be up in the air. Physically. Not some weird analogy, not some weird, you know what I mean? No, physically up in the air, in an airplane. That's the rapture, people. The rapture is when you realize that, oh, wait, hold on. I'm the savior. Who's going to come and save you other than through the power of your mind and your creative abilities okay that new destination you've worked incredibly hard to prepare for without fear you need to navigate your navigate there <laughs> um, I came across this to do recently professor Tommy Kerry said something interesting you can read the sentence in your own time <laughs> Um, stereotypes are attached to how dominant groups view the males of that particular racial or ethnic groups ethnic group interesting Tommy Curry has got some really interesting stuff to say I need to read some more about he's got some books that I need to check out right after I'm done these three books that I'm reading we gonna check them out um yeah Umar Johnson he also has some interesting stuff to say as well what did Umar say Oh, Umar says something interesting that I'm like, I agree with very much. He's like, the revolution that needs to take place is one in our minds, the way we think about the world. If, we ain't, if we're not talking institutions, we're not serious. I agree with that. I agree with that. Black men, African men, we need to, we need to rise up and show, show the world how it's done. Show the world how civilizations are really built <laughs> right let's get to the conclusion baby let's get to the conclusion oh man even the conclusions got points man come on man to that 20 year old or 20 year old version of me 15 years ago however long it was now you need to start thinking very carefully about where you want to see yourself in life okay um for those that you know, let's give a little summary of everything. Mind, body, soul. Mind is about money. You need to take your money very seriously. You need to take your intelligence very seriously. The educational system doesn't give a damn about, you know what I mean, how to nurture the creative power that you have. I've only come to realize it now in my 30s, mid-30s, that I'm realizing, oh, wow, I'm actually a very intelligent and creative man. But none of that intelligence, none of that creativity was nurtured in a way that will really bring out the brilliance that I am. Do you know what I mean? 
So money, intelligence, your name is important. You need to study your name. Your dreams are important, okay? Um, mind, body. Body is the body. Take care of your body. Mental health is the game. Soul, what is the soul? Soul is about the spirit. Study the spiritual practices of who of your ancestral heritage. Nobody is saying go and practice it. But you need to know about it. You need to study it. Study how did they practice? What did they practice? What did they know about the world that many of us today have forgotten about? I reckon in, in the coming years, a lot of us are going to turn back and say, those people were actually quite intelligent, you know. <laughs> Even saying that out loud is so, so silly, so foolish sounding. Do you know what I mean? We're going to turn back to look at the motherland and realize, oh, oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're sorry, these Africans... They knew what was going on. I'm talking about deep knowledge too. All of this new stuff you're seeing now. Most of these inventions and technologies that we're seeing have a foundation in African knowledge. But we'll leave that there. Um, yeah, so spirit, uh, orgasm, get rid of porn, get rid of that shit, man. It ain't doing nothing for you. Not even a little bit. Not even on weekends. Oh, you know, if you do it in moderation, surely it's fine, right? Really? Everything, well, everything done in moderation is alright, isn't it? Wrong, wrong, and more wrong. Um, no. No. Just because you do it in moderation doesn't mean it's alright. Smoke in moderation. Yeah, 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 that's the right thing for you to do. No. Oh, but you're just looking at the extremes, you know, look. Listen. You need to cut it out completely. Now, you might be asking, okay, sure, let's cut out the porn, but okay, maybe we could still masturbate, right? I would argue, <laughs> especially if you're in a spiritual battle, heavy spiritual battle, you probably shouldn't be doing that either. But, um, yeah, you know, trial and error, I guess. You're going to figure it out. You're going to figure it out. Um, I had a dream recently where I saw Jordan Peterson. And he told me to go clean my room. I'm like, what? Yo, they send the head honcho to come tell me to clean my room? You know you got to clean your room when the head honcho himself shows up to tell you to go clean your room. Um, I had other things doing, so I waited a few days. And then I cleaned it eventually, a few days later after I saw that dream. All kinds of flies here. Um, and then that day, literally something that I was expecting, literally showed up in the mail. I'm like, oh, wow. Hmm, that's interesting. Sometimes coincidences <laughs> may not be coincidence. May not be a coincidence. So yeah, so spirit, you got to study your ancestry, man. You got to know who these people are. Don't just look at them as a bunch of demonic people that had demonic practices. Anybody that tells you that the spiritual practices of your ancestors are demonic, that person is about to manipulate you in such sophisticated ways you will likely be unable to unravel all of it in your lifetime. I guarantee you. Spirit, got to study the spiritual practices of your ancestors. Study it. Nobody's saying practice it. You got to know about it though. Orgasm, cut out explicit content. I mean, aspire to books. I got so many books now. Look at all this. Look at all this. All of these are books that I've actually read, by the way. They look clean and, <laughs> and untouched, but these are books that I actually read. And a lot of these books as well, I have the audio accompaniment. So sometimes I might have the physical, I have the physical book and I'm like, okay, I don't want to really read the physical book now. Let me, for the next chapter, I'm going to read the audio book and then I just listen to the audio book. Okay. So we got the O, we got the U triune. A lot of videos out there about, oh, be single literally for the rest of your life. I mean, that sounds so pointless and so stupid. I'm like, what the hell? My ancestors came this far just for the bloodline to end with me? Fuck out of here. This bloodline is going to continue in more ways than you have the capacity to count. You understand? Marriage. Knowledge. Marriage. If you're on this channel, we aspire to marriage over here. If that's not your thing, find a different channel. 
that's what it means to be a triune son husband father in that order language you need to learn languages you need to learn how to communicate with people from other cultures that is what it means to speak in tongues okay so that's it mind body soul that's the framework Woo! that's a lot um for those of you that are like tldw tldr i don't know this video is too long i don't want to watch all this basically you just need to be saving money develop your body and develop yourself spiritually i guess those are the three things okay um yeah where we at if this video doesn't resonate with you it's not for you if anything seems trivial it's not for you stop watching videos that are not for you um, stop finding fault with differing beliefs, calling people that see the world different from you demonic or other any, any other such absurdities. Um, stop, <laughs> this is a cool little thing that I wrote here. Stop trying to judge a book by its cover or, or a stone by its seeming inability to move. If it's not moving, it's doing exactly what it needs to be doing. Good stuff. Yeah, what would the younger self, my younger self say to me? What would my older self be saying to me now? You know? Um, I reckon my older self would probably be saying, be careful that in as much as you may justifiably be attempting to escape from what you consider to be the matrix, be careful that you're not constructing even more destructive structures around you. Okay? Good advice, 15 year old, 50. I'd be 50 in 15 years, that's powerful. My goal is to look beautiful. Yeah, even more beautiful than I do now, the gray hairs and shit. Anyway. Right, let's get to it. There's two books every man should be reading right now. The other book, I didn't bring it because I'm like, I'm not going to show it on camera just yet. Certain knowledge needs to be guarded. <laughs> I get it now. Um, two books every man should be reading right now. The first book is a book about the spiritual practices of those that came before you deep spiritual practices okay from people that respect those cultures all right this book i just read called the serpent and the rainbow extremely powerful book very very powerful book if you're a man out there seeking to create a life of power seeking to build themselves up to be a force to be reckoned with you absolutely need to read this book. Um, and I'm going to read a passage from this book, that a paragraph from this book that I was just like, oh my God, beautiful. But before I read it, consider the following proposition. We all agree that there's a very high level of deception in the world, right? The disagreement comes when we seek to ascertain the degree to which we are being deceived. The moment I was able to consider the possibility the, decep the, the deception went as far as the manipulation of our spiritual beliefs and knowledge. That's when I began to see the world for what it really is. Do you understand? So let's read it. Page 72 of The Serpent and the Rainbow by Professor Wade Davis. Actually, I don't know if he's a professor. But after this book, she better put some respect on that man's name. Page 72 says... And this book is about pretty much Haiti, about zombies, about this concept of a zombie. Um, yeah, it's about Haiti, about the history of Haiti, about the religion, well, about one of the major religions in Haiti um, that some would call voodoo. But in truth, it is voodoo. Okay? Voodoo. Is not an isolated cult. It is a complex mystical world worldview, a system of beliefs concerning the relationship between man, nature, and the supernatural forces of the universe. It fuses the unknown to the known, creates order out of chaos, renders the mysterious intelligible. Voodoo cannot be abstracted from the day-to-day -day lives of the believers in Haiti as in Africa. In Haiti, as in Africa, there is no separation between the sacred and the secular, between the holy and the profane, between the material and the spiritual, 
Every dance, every song, every action is but a particle of the whole. Each gesture is a prayer for the survival of the community. Powerful stuff right here, cuz. Oh, even said more. There was something else on the other page. Um, voodoo is a quintessentially democratic faith. Goodness gracious. Have you ever heard anybody describe it as that? I haven't heard it one time anybody describing it as that. Everybody's like, oh, it's demonic. Shut up. You don't know shit. So, yeah. I don't know. The rest of this video is basically simple stuff that, I don't know, you should probably know by now. Look good, smell good. Before you make decisions that will impact your life in a big way, um, decisions that require heavy financial commitments, you know, question those decisions, wrestle with those decisions. Um, yeah. And also, before, before you, you know, before you consider, um, let me see, should I end this now? Stop sharing this, make this bigger. Before you, um, take on the advice of other people, try to consider whether or not it's compatible with your understanding, your worldview. Do you understand? Try to consider, consider whether or not what they're saying is compatible with how you live, how you should be. Yeah, with your understanding, with your evolving understanding, evolving understanding. Um, something as well that is is in this um in this da, 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 share it. This part about a passport is extremely important, people. The passport you have is the most important document we have. Okay? Your passport is the most important document you have. This is the only document that's, that's serious. To go from one country to another, there is no other document that enables you to do that. That is a very serious idea. Okay? Um... Whenever your passport leaves your hand, you need to be very sure about the next sequence of events. Whenever you take your passport and you give it to someone, you need to be very clear in your mind as to what is about to unfold. If you're not sure about what's about to unfold, you need to be. I'm going to leave it at that. You absolutely need to be. <laughs> um, the nature of warfare, like I said before, I just came out of a very heavy spiritual battle. And to those out there that are also going through spiritual battles, I'm telling you right now, spiritual wars, you're going to come out of it. And when you come out of it, you're going to be very sure of yourself. You're going to be... You're going to be grateful for the knowledge that has been imparted on you as a result of you going through that experience. I'm using my webcam now because... My phone died. My phone's about to die, so we charging it. We charging it. I need that Wi-Fi, that data. Um, yes. Spiritual warfare. You need to know yourself. You need to know your enemy. You need to know how far your enemy is going to go to keep you where they are, to, stay, to keep you where you are, for them to stay where they are. When in truth, they're not even that high up in the first place. So you need to be very careful. You need to know yourself. You need to know their tactics. Okay? Um, sexual health, like I said, is very important. Do you know what I mean? Get yourself situated. Oh, I didn't even finish this. Two books every man should be reading. Deep spiritual knowledge of your ancestors, those that have come before you. This one, The Serpent and the Rainbow by Wade Davis. And another that I'm reading currently about um, the history of my next major destination. You need to be reading extensively. Um, you need to know about the history of the people who you're going to be spending time with if you're going to be um, traveling to a different country. Um, yeah.
those are the two books you should be reading. So I know right now I showed you, I don't know how many books right here. I'm like, oh, I read this, I read that, I read all of this stuff, man. But beyond all of this right here, if you're a man out there, you're a black man, African man out there, and I'm speaking to people like that look like me because I'm, I'm, I feel like I know how I think. So I'm not going to speak to a different culture or group of people. So if I'm emphasizing black or African, don't let that put you off because you know what I mean? We speak into ourselves over here. We're not running away from ourselves anymore. Um, there's two books you should be reading. Deep Ancestry. Study the deep ancestry of your people. Who are these people? What did they deal with? How did they understand the world? What spiritual practices did they have? What knowledge did they have of the physical world, of the spiritual world? What knowledge did they have? You need to know these things. Absolutely, irrevocably know these things. Why do you need to know these things? Because that world that they lived in is the same world that we live in. We're not on a different planet, fam. We're still on the same planet. A lot of those same principles will apply to us today. What mistakes did they make? How did they get out of those mistakes? You need to know these things, fam. Because it'll, 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 like a dream, it'll help you refine your thinking. These are your people. You need to know them. Your enemies know them. <laughs> your enemies know how you and your lineage, they know how they think. So don't let that fool you. Um, the history of your people and the history of the next major destination you're going to find yourself in. You need to know about that. All right. Now, this sentence right here. Each and every gesture you perform is a prayer. That is a very beautiful line from that book I just read, man. I remember when I finished reading the book, I was so happy. I'm like, wow. It's not a small book, by the way. How many pages? A little over 200, a little over almost 300 pages. But it's a very, it's a very beautiful, powerful book. Um, it's a very healing book as well, I found. You know what I mean? For those of you that are on a spiritual journey, you know, you need to, and I almost considered whether or not I should share the name of this book because I haven't shared the name of the second book that I said I should read. I considered it because I'm like, hmm, I don't want to distract anyone. You should only be reading this book if you come from the culture of if you're from the Dahomean kingdom, the four people, you should only be reading this book if you're from, you know, you're from Haiti, for instance, or one of these other West African groups of people. If you're not, I don't think you're going to find that much value in this book. You need to find value. You need to go find the knowledge, the cultural, the spiritual knowledge of people from your, your background as an African. Okay. If you're black, I don't know, do some tests, figure out where you come from. Blood tests. So yeah, that's the video, man. This video is long as hell. Oh my God. Who am I? Who are we over here? Over here, we call ourselves the gods. <laughs> we call ourselves the gods, man. That's the name of the channel. Um, I don't know. I just wanted a cool sounding name. Um, so yeah, that's it. We are the gods. Did he say we? Did he say the gods? As in plural? Yes, yes, yes. yes. We said all that. We said all that, people. This channel is going to be dedicated to men um, that aspire to greatness, be excellent, sovereignty, knowledge, deep spiritual knowledge. I mean, that's what this channel is for. Break free from cycles of pain and suffering you know what i mean that's what this channel is for man yeah cutting edge consciousness man great all right we're gonna leave the again out of it <laughs> let's make men great y'all let's make fathers great let's make husbands great that's what this channel is for yeah man i'm about to end this video this video is done with uh oh, I was zoom out of this. This tool is quite useful. You can zoom in, do all sorts of fancy stuff. Anyway.
So yeah, may the gods be with you. May you may you may you be protected by angels. This, I'm speaking to the two year old version of myself. The next 15 years are going to be quite fun. You're going to learn a lot um, in, in the coming years. I mean, don't be afraid of anything, you know. Seek knowledge above all else. There's nothing to be afraid of, do you know what I mean? May, may you be protected by angels. May you be guided by, by, by angels. Um, um, the next 15 years, they're going to fly by, yo. Before you know it, you're going to be 35 and going to be like, wow, time is gone. Time is moving. So, yeah, stay focused, stay disciplined. Um, and try to avoid all of the distractions out there. Um, I mean, um, this knowledge that I've acquired, do you know what I mean? I'd give quite a lot to do that, wouldn't I? <laughs> um, the the one of the major challenges we face as men is that of I think distractions. There's a lot of distractions out there. You need to be very careful. You know what I mean? Porn is a very major one. You know what I mean, you need to stay clear of that. Um, you know. It's getting dark now, so the video is about to start looking grainy. Um, how many pixels is this? Flip pin wall. Anyway, distractions. You try to you have to keep your life focused. All of these books I showed you, they're cool, but two books, this book and that other book that I just showed you. You need to you need to keep your reading focused. Don't be reading too like because right now, the thing, the, the reason I'm saying, even though I've shown you all of these books to say, oh, I'm reading widely, it's very easy to just sort of, you know what I mean, have to be overwhelmed by all of the information that's out there and not read anything. So if, if you're the kind of person that, if you want to keep your life focused, don't be reading, don't be overwhelmed by all of the books out there. 10 books for this, the top 20 books for that, the top 100 books for this, the top 5,000 books for this topic. Keep your reading focused. Keep it simple. Keep it trim. Do you understand? And you're going to be okay. Yeah, the world that's coming is going to be a world of distractions galore. So be careful about how you navigate such a world. All right? Um, yeah. So yeah, that's it. See you in the air, folks. See you in the air. That's the real rapture. See you in Africa. See you in China, South America. See you in the galaxies and star systems beyond Earth. That's it. That's it, folks. See you in the air. That's the rapture. Um, good stuff. Here's to knowledgeable men. Here's to the next generation of great husbands, great fathers. Here's to the next generation of great and aware men of wealth, of power. You know, power is not one's ability to control another person, but your ability to, it's actually about yourself. <laughs> it's your ability to navigate the world without restrictions. That's real power. So yeah, let me get this. Basic ass camera out of here, y'all. <laughs> but yeah, man, you got it, yo. You got it. Don't don't have any fear of anything out there. I mean, seek knowledge above all else. So yeah, that's it. This is the mind body framework. An attempt to capture all the experience that I've had in the world. You know, cute little, cute little framework that I, I hope gets this idea across. I mean, let me show the framework. I don't know if I was showing it. Um, yeah, cute little framework that I hope gets this idea across of all the experience that I've had in the last several years, last decade and a half. Hmm. Oh, and and it's, it's a full moon today, actually. It's a full moon. It's a full moon. 
I've um I've, I've started looking at the beauty of the moon and the beauty of the world around me. See, it's why you need to be reading widely, because it, it, you start seeing the world. You know, that's one of the things that, and this may not be pertinent for, but as a Christian, I get the impression that you're just closed off to the world. But once you start looking beyond the Bible, again, it's a great book. It's a cool book. <laughs> well, once you start looking beyond the Bible, animal spirit guides, you know what I mean? Animal dreaming. Started looking at, you start looking at the world and being like, wow. Now I'm studying birds and stuff. You know what I mean? Burn man up in this bitch. All right, man. We're out of here. Stay blessed. Stay beautiful. Stay powerful. Stay knowledgeable. Here's to here's to the future. See you when um see you in another. I don't know. I don't know how long it's gonna be till I make another video. But after this one, like I said, I got three heavy books that I'm about to finish. So yeah. Blessings and love. Get this basic ass. What's this? Three three sixty p. Flip pin. All right, man. All right, man. We're out of here. We gone.